Uh, right, I'm... What, what else are we going to look at? I think we had... Uh... Oh, yeah, Critical loaded a video. This was kind of funny. I w we had a... Uh... Yeah, so he obviously uploaded this video. The cucks. And that was like... That was like an offline uh, game he played, which is the first time he's done that in years. Right. But then obviously, thankfully, he did a video like addressing all the... It's so... I love the title he gave it. I love him for that. Moist critical situation is crazy. Just so self-aware. I love it. Evan. I love it. ...that I was quitting the internet. So I started scratching at the hair on my chinny chin chin wondering... Evans to Betsy, what a week, huh, sports fans? Holy Toledo. Yeah. He actually put most critical situation is crazy. I mean, he did that because he knew all the commentary Andes were going to do the exact same thing. So we kind of beat them to it. I, I do love that. It's based. So Moist Critical's in a big oopsie poopsie situation here. It reminds me of the time in Moonfall when KC Houseman sacrifices himself and dies of cringe to become the moon. Yeah, so... Uh, I like the self-aware bit as well. This is like the time when Peter Griffin got stuck on the toilet with James Woods for five hours, and then he was indicted in Dark Souls. Being serious now, since this has become such a big issue, I've been in a lot of drama recently. I'm in hot water, and I'm biting on the fart bubbles that pop up in the bathtub here. It is... It feels like he's making excuses. I am 29 seconds into the video, little bro. 29 seconds. A lot. So let's start with the most recent one today. My retirement. I didn't know I was retiring. <laughs> this, I, I talked about this yesterday. It's just like, because he because they put out a statement saying he's stepping back from the podcast, like they instantly assume that he's like quitting his YouTube channel as well. I personally think, and he might say this in the video, I think he kind of realized how terminally online his job was and it was just brain poison. Because again, like we've had a lot of drama the past couple of months. Like if, if it's all you talk about, it, it just does seep into your brain. And he probably kind of thought, well, I'm not going to stop doing YouTube, but the podcast, yeah, I could probably take some time off that. That's news to me. I'm as shocked as all of you are. I had a ton of fun last night playing a game called Clickleding, which is basically like a cuckoldry simulator, but for clicking against like the Lorax in a hotel room. And I just did like an old school gameplay commentary video. I, I was bubbly. Full of jubilation, I posted it today only to learn that I'm just a big old fucking liar. Liar, liar, plants for hire, I suppose. I Apparently, and I didn't know this until I posted the video, everyone was under the impression that I was quitting the internet. So I started scratching at the hair on my chinny chin chin wondering, when the fuck did that happen? I remember they just said like indefinite hiatus on the actual post on Patreon. And it's like, how do you, how are you able to move that? And I've seen so many commentary videos being like, talking about him leaving and they've got like half a million views already it's just like how like even dolan's video on it just absolutely juiced i mean we can let, let's watch uh let's watch dolan's video again actually oh new geopod video okay i might watch that dolan darkerist well yeah i mean this one welcome back to slop live today's slopics about critical a statement went out on his podcast patreon saying that charlie has made the decision to leave both the official podcast and red thread it then goes on to say that he wants to go on an indefinite hiatus to scale back indefinite hiatus his time spent on the internet and the recent hate they also specify that they may consider a replacement depending on how things go so this does sound like it's going to be more of a long term ones that gives you an addictive high and then suck you dry Kind of like with these streams. It's a gamble okay, bro, if you're given okay. good slot or I not. I would not make that comparison here, Rather okay. Him stepping away for a few weeks. Now, as he hasn't posted on his main channel about this, it's still uncertain whether or not he wants to leave YouTube entirely for now. If he weren't cut out, Charlie received a lot of hate after he debated- Yeah, even Dolan, like, basically just said the same thing. Even Dolan was like, oh yeah, well, he might leave YouTube, which is like, I do like Dolan, but his brain- He is a duck, his brain is very small. ...dated Sneeko. During this debate, Sneeko asks Charlie if trans people under 18 should be allowed to have surgery, to which Charlie said yes, though he did walk this back later yes. in the stream, saying that he thought Sneeko was speaking in hyperbole. The craziest part about this is that Critical actually got more hate than Sneeko, despite in the very same stream, Sneeko arguing that the age of consent should be lowered. But yeah, it remains uncertain whether or not Critical is just dialing back his time spent online and is going to keep uploading, or if he's going to take a step back from everything. The good news is that- I can't understand what he's saying because his accent's funny, but yeah, basically like he thought that, you know, Critical was leaving, like not doing videos either. Was I sleepwalking? Do I have somnambulism? Is this some kind of like- 
you know, fight club situation, but instead of, like, Tyler Durden, I have fucking Charles Turden here that's just making wrong announcements. It turns out the patient zero behind all of this was a post Jackson made announcing that I would be leaving the podcasts, which is something I thought about periodically for quite a few months now, mainly because... Being a trans ally is apparently worse than what Sneeko is arguing. Yeah, it's, it's like I, I talked about it on the To Be Honest podcast. We recorded an episode where we talked about the trans debate. And I, I, I am still in that camp where I fully agree that like, because, you know, I have friends that are trans. I've got employees that are trans. I feel like you should be given that choice. But also, there's a lot of consideration you need to take as well. Because I don't think people realize like how that decision is formed so much by your parents and your home environment. There's so many factors. I remember Colossal was asking me and he was like, he basically said to me, do you think like people should be able to take like hormone replacement therapy or like become trans at a young age? Yes or no. And I couldn't say yes or no to Colossal. I couldn't. And I was like, I'm really sorry. I know I sound like a, a I'm, I'm doing like a, a political thing here, like giving a non-answer. But it's too complicated because it's like you could have like uh, parents in a you could have a child that feels like they're trans and they live in an incredibly like conservative household where the parents are just like, no, 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 like you're not, you're not, you're not. And then that ends up like making the child go against their parents thinking that they're definitely trans. But then also on the other end of the spectrum as well, you might have a child that's like, uh, they play with like a lot of female toys. If they're a boy, they play with a lot of female toys. They dress up as a girl when they're younger and stuff like that. And then they might, you know, the parents, if they're incredibly left-leaning, might think, oh, our child's trans. And then kind of push them down that kind of narrative. Because I've seen that happen in uh, like documentaries in uh, Sweden and stuff. That happens with incredibly progressive parents. So the parents have a, a much bigger influence than they realize. It isn't like a yes or no answer. I mean, the only comparison I came with as well as like when i was younger right when i was younger uh i played uh with my sister a lot right and i would you know i'd read her bedtime stories uh, i would play with her you know uh, her barbie toys her little bratz dolls i'd watch like girls films with her i was definitely quite feminine as a child and you know if i had like really progressive parents they might have thought oh my god our kid's trans like, thankfully not, because I'm definitely not trans. 100% I'm not trans. Like, you've seen the post of me dressed up as a woman and stuff on Instagram. Like, I'm not trans. Like, that, that is never happening. But I still, like, fully support them and stuff. And also, another good example I want to give here, and I know that this is very bizarre, because I, I didn't want to mention this until the podcast was out, but I'm just going to do it anyway, because, you know, Critical talked about it. I had uh, a good example is, because I feel that, like I said, I have friends that are trans. I've got employees that are trans. I don't feel it's fair on me as a non-trans person to take the choice away from someone that feels like they're trans, away from them, right? But at the same time, in a, because I would say becoming trans, you are modifying your body. You are, right? And sometimes that is irreversible, right? So I'm always, I always want to make sure the people that go down that path always make sure that they know they're making the right choice because a lot of the time it is completely irreversible. So, and again, before I go into this, I'm not that educated on like, trans stuff and puberty blockers and the names and stuff like that i just know that i have friends that are trans i've got fans that are trans so when i was younger right when i was a lot younger and we talked about this on the podcast i was mad insecure about my height madly insecure like i'm not short right like i'm like 5 11 6 foot i know there's a whole gag like haha paro short you know like it, it does you know i play into it for like a react andy like i don't really care but like when i was younger like 15 to 18 probably younger than that, I was mad insecure about my height. And I wanted to get that fixed to the point where I was looking up how to be taller, how to be taller. I have body dysmorphia, 100% I have body dysmorphia, which is what a lot of trans people go through, right? They've got body dysmorphia, you know? And I wanted to get leg lengthening surgery. And my parents were like, nah, there's no way you're doing that. There's no way you're doing that. And then I went to my GP and my GP was basically saying to me like, no, you, you shouldn't do that. It's going to cost you like 20K and then they're going to break your legs. They're going to put, you know, stilts in them. You're never going to be able to probably run again. You'll be taller. You'll be a bit taller, but like, you know, and that, and I'm very, very happy that me at a young age, I didn't go through with that. And my parents pushed against it because me as an adult now when my brain is fully formed i do think to myself if i did that i did something life-changing that i couldn't take back and it would have like permanently affected me 
so i'm i know this sounds like a reach but i'm trying to relate that into like the the trans debate as well where it's like you can i've been so burnt out from all the hang on hang on hang on i, I really don't want to lose my train of thought here because it's really important i feel like i'm trying to relate that to the trans debate because you can do things to your body at a young age that can change things forever and i'm not saying that you can't again i think the planet we live in is an absolute hellscape and if you can do anything within your power to make your life more worth living definitely do that because i can't imagine a worse hell than having body dysmorphia and looking at yourself in the mirror every day and thinking i'm a woman or i'm a man or i'm the opposite gender and i think that's hell and then being told that you can't fulfill making your life better that's soul crushing but the point I'm trying to make is I was young. I had body dysmorphia. I eventually grew out of it. And thankfully, I didn't go through with that surgery. And I'm not saying that that's the same for everyone, by the way. But all, all I'm saying is with, with debates like this, it's so difficult because you are doing something to permanently change your like biochemistry or whatever buzzword you want to use. It's, it's a very difficult topic, but I do think everyone should have their own choice. But also you need to holy shit like there are so many ramifications to what you do it's crazy and then there's also the debate of like are your parents progressive or are they not progressive and are you going to feel the same way in five years you know if you feel like you're trans at 15 and then you hit 20 and you think you're not trans anymore and then there's obviously the people that go trans and then they regret it and they want to revert back and then all the people weaponize them it's like oh look 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 trans people don't like being trans you know it's it is so difficult and so complicated and again i am not very good at talking about this stuff i'm just a react andy but i feel like this was going to come up at one point and i do feel like what charlie was going to say would probably be more worded like that if he wasn't constantly being caught in gotcha moments on stream because i started to recognize that i was becoming the very thing i'd make fun of with being chronically online like i just was always online and the podcasts were a big proponent of that and i just kind of wanted to scale back the amount of time i spend online so and i kept jackson in the loop the whole time here about where my head was at and last week i told him hey man i think this is going to be where I, I hang up the jersey you can put it in the rafters throw it in the dumpster but i think i'm just going to be you know sailing off into the sunset here and just reducing the amount of stuff i do online Which i feel like what i've said is so bad now because i'm gonna have a bunch of andy's pulling up like okay someone literally just said in chat right now the regret rate is one percent it's like where, where, where was that pulled from where was that where was that statistic pulled from I'm he a five feet understood. three inches short king and was bullied mercilessly as a kid. Enough that I actually took human growth hormones to help give me a little help. Clearly it didn't help that much. But I'm never going to get that leg surgery. It's just not worth it. Nah, Joe, don't do it. I don't know how old you are. I have no idea, but don't do it. Please don't do it. That that stuff messes you up for life. Like you can't you can't run properly. You can't, and also, by the way, I'm not, I'm not trying to say don't go trans, by the way, because I'm saying don't get leg lengthening surgery. That's not what I'm trying to say at all. I'm just saying that they're both uh, procedures that change your body, uh, usually irreversibly. Hi, Pyro. So make sure I you know what you're getting your into. I think people need to see it like tattoos. There's a reason why tattoos are for 18 plus since they are permanent and take a lot of time and money to get rid of. Imagine the money that could go to the poor jobs. Good day. Thank you, ready for the 10. Yeah, I do know that uh, Colossal brought up that argument, I think, when we were debating on, to be honest. He brought up that t t tattoos were 18. Uh, sorry, there, there was a donor that I skipped because I didn't want to lose my train of thought. Someone I've said they're from so Wordington. Out from all the drama lately. Wordington, Wordington. I feel like I just watch the same negative videos just by a different YouTuber every day. No shade to you or Charlie OFC. Just sad to see how grim he seems to be getting and how shitty people can be. Yeah. No, I agree with that. The drama cycle at the minute is just a bit grating. Good. So he made the announcement, just letting people know that. And then that got spun on Twitter and Reddit as Moist Criticals taking an indefinite hiatus and quitting the internet fundamentally. Don't know when I'll be back. He's done with the internet because of all this controversy. <laughs> puberty blockers again like i said that's that's something i'm not well versed in enough at all i just know that i've had people that have come up to me like at meet and greets and they've been like you know i'm trans uh i told my mom yesterday and you're the second person that i've told and then when someone tells me that it's like they've just told me the secret identity of like mr incredible it's like wow okay and obviously that does affect my opinion on stuff like this because that's like a fan and i feel like they should also have like a voice definitely
It's just very complicated. I've owned my short status. Best way to deal with the bullies. To any youngins on here who are short, best thing you can do is be so much better at making fun of yourself that anyone who tries just looks like an asshole. Learn to love yourself. Base Joe, thank you for the 10. That's true. If you get mates to make fun of you for something, that actually builds up your resilience so much. Like, you know how you guys make fun of my height? Like, I play into it and stuff as a bit. But, like, if you made those jokes about me when I was, like, 15, that actually would have proper psyoped me. I would have felt really bad over it. But now, because it's like, I'm comfortable with my height, it's like, okay. If anything, it's a reminder of, like, how much of a moron I was back then that my brain was in that, like, that level of dysphoria. But Thank you, Mr. Man, for the five months. Tui, on his grave, he's gone. Hey, Paro, what is the new slop video about? And do you have hairline dysmorphia? Isn't it dysphoria? I love my hairline. I, I, I mean, I l looking at the post, I don't even know where that's coming from. It's it's literally just talking about the podcast and me just stepping away. Like, it's not. It doesn't extend beyond that. I can't even wrap my tiny noodle around how anyone could perceive this as me being done with the internet entirely. But. That's the story that they ran with, and that's what most people saw, not the actual post. So everyone thought I was quitting the internet, so I posted that video that I was really happy with because it just felt like an OG old school video that made me happy. Puberty blockers are only gender-based treatment you can get below 18, and they have zero side effects besides starting puberty a little later. Is that, is that the reason why you take them then? Like, is it to like delay puberty so then when you hit 18, it's like easier to transition? Is that why? I don't, I don't know much on that, I'll be honest. I was just on about the whole, like, becoming trans thing, honestly. That's why I brought up the whole, um, that's why I brought up the whole leg lengthening thing, you know? So when you get, like, top surgery and stuff, like, you are having surgery on yourself. It's to give you time. Oh, I see. Okay, that, that makes more sense. Okay. And then bang! Just a flood of comments and dislikes all saying shit like, How could you fucking deceive us? I thought you quit, huh? What happened to leaving, huh? I just read this post on Twitter from an account that had a profile pic of titties photoshopped onto Thomas. I can tell he was getting his opinions from Twitter, which is like the worst place to do it. As well though, I did notice his video, the click holder video did get a lot more dislikes than usual. Edison that said you were done and it had 50,000 likes, so I know it was true and you're just a fucking liar. I can't even just peacefully walk away from some projects without it being a massive fu I think if he wasn't involved in the Sneeko debate, I think no one would have cared. I think because of the sneaker debate, it kind of supercharged it. And then the podcast, him leaving came up and then people thought, yeah, he's done. Because he definitely, because whenever you get into drama, you always definitely have a lot of vultures circling around you. People that aren't regular viewers, like waiting for you to slip up to, so they can comment on it. Fucking reaction over actual nothing burger information. And trust me, no one has a palate more refined for nothing burgers than me. I have ranted about the stupidest shit of all time, but this was mind boggling even for me. So to set the record straight, no. No under 18 affirming treatments have permanent effects. Have you seen the new Tom by remake? Was a good game for the PS1 when it had games. Your hairline is good. Thank you, Sam, for the 10. Uh, I, I played Tombi as a kid on the PS1. I played like a demo. What, have they bought it out again recently? Uh, I'm not retiring. You're saying that not, you're saying that the puberty blockers, the gender affirming treatments have zero permanent effects. I would know I'm trans. They'd have side effects though, right? To be fair, I, I think I kind of said my piece as well. And again, I did preface it by saying I'm not well versed on it. I just, again, I just know I've got like friends, employees, fans who are trans. So I feel like I needed to kind of like speak up for them. And also voice my actual opinion as well. Because I feel like it's more important to kind of like lay everything out on the table instead of just being like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Be happy. You know, I kind of wanted to, I think me giving my own experience about the leg lengthening surgery is like important because it's like you can be in a different mindset when you're younger, when your brain's still forming about what you want to do. And sometimes you still want to do that. You, you're fully formed, you're an adult and you still feel that way. But sometimes you don't. And in my case, I didn't. My, my brain changed and my dysphoria went away. But sometimes it doesn't and that's totally valid. Are you Dex the 20? People got to stop platforming Sneeko. Let that rodent fade into obscurity. The last time I interacted with Sneeko, he voiced in the Cruelty Squad video, which was very nice of him. Um, I just think he's part of that whole kind of like React Andy part of the internet. 
I just I don't know why Charlie debated him again. Like he left on a W. Like if you debate again, like it's eh. despite what the experts are telling you. No one knows this. Sneeko had a voice cameo in Cruelty Squad. Does no one know this? Sneeko voice acted in Cruelty Squad. Did no did you guys not know? How is this like a big reveal for you guys right now? It it he has a voice cameo in there. I tried I tried to get him to voice one of the uh the cuck characters in the game. But then I went with like another character as well, talking about like shilling crypto and stuff. And then he, he just happily voiced it. And I had to say to him, I was like, I'm not trying to get you in an epic gotcha moment, by the way. This is just like a, a voice. And he was like, Yeah, I don't care, I'll do it. All I did was delete that video. Walk away from a couple of projects. Uh like that's really Show, show the sneaker voice cameo. Yeah, hang on. I'll see if I, I'll see if I can find it. I'll see if I can find it. It's in the Jerry? it's in the Alpine Resort level of the map. Hang on. I I gotta see if I can find it now. Hang on. Let me. I gotta put my stuff to like one four four p. Uh. Actually, a real place in Hang on. I gotta I gotta find him, bro. He's one of the CEOs. He's one of the targets that you kill. I know that he voiced that. Uh where is he? He's not any of these guys. Oh, he might be this guy. Zor has an underground blood. system that you can use to get it to your targets via the vent. And no. He is an alpine resort. Where is he? Is he this guy? British people. In fact, with dumb fuck tourists. Fucking hell. No, that was TTS. Is it this? No, it's not this guy. He actually has unique dialogue for a character. One more year and I'll have enough money. Nah. Where is he? I definitely... I'm not- I'm not misremembering this right. He 100% had a voice cameo in this game. It's- I know it's not him. What the fuck that freak- Yeah, I know- I know it's not him. It was a guy in a shower that I killed. Ah, oh, here we go. Looks like art on commission. Can't even take a piss without some freak like you bothering me. What is it? Be quick about it. This trip is an absolute disaster. How did no one know this, bro, that he's in the video? All of our deals have gone to shit. I'm readying myself to declare bankruptcy. The other guys seem to be more interested in relaxing. I'm the only serious business-minded individual here. <laughs> it actually is like parody. You're also one? That's good. <laughs> Oh, it's it's aged. It, it actually, like, I, I did have to say to him, I'm not getting you in a gotcha moment here, by the way. Because this guy's like CEO Free the Matrix mindset. And he was just like, yeah, I don't care, bro. I'll voice it. So I, I do appreciate him for that one. Uh, thank you, Sam, for the 10. This is like Gorbino's quest of life. How did no one know this? How did no one know that Sneeko was in the Cruelty Squad video, guys? Come on, I did a list on that as well. Really it. Like, that's a pretty normal thing to do, especially when one of them I've been doing for like eight years. I really didn't think... It he voice acted that well, though. Yeah, he did. He did. Like, it, it was genuinely funny. He did a great job with it. It was that deep, especially not deep enough for how big of a story it's become with all of the wild narratives running around about the true reason that I stopped doing it. So let's get into that drama. I've talked about it on stream, I don't even know how many times at this point, but we'll just talk about all of it in this video here. So, when covering the Ava Tyson situation, I was attacked by a lot of people for not being quick enough. Even though I covered it within like the first six hours, people were- it's surprising that he agreed to it. Uh, I, I just reached out to everyone I knew on Discord and I reached out to Sneeko and I was like, hey, can you voice act this? I was like, it's not a gotcha thing. It's like, you know, I gave him the context of the game and stuff and he was like, yeah, sure, I'm down. So yeah, it, it was really nice of him to do that. Or unsatisfied that I hadn't made a video within like the first fucking 20 minutes of it dropping. And then when I did finally finish the full video covering all of it, it was another massive problem where now I only did it out of an obligation because people called me out. And then I also got accused of being a transphobe because I didn't use Ava Tyson's preferred pronouns, which were she, her. I didn't. Yeah, I, I do. I'm happy that he acknowledged this because I know this is something Finster brought up. It's like, it's like Charlie was only saying Ava the entire video, not she, her, which like, I don't really mind that much to be fair. But I also kind of thought about it as like, if he uses the right pronouns, then because 
Charlie, uh, Charlie's definitely very like centrist, not his politics, but just his audience. And I feel like he's got people that are like on the left side and on the right side. I have that as well. I, I definitely have that. You know, like I have people here that are like trans and stuff. And then I've got people that are like, you know, basically just from 4chan lurking. But, you know, I, I definitely feel like with, uh, with him, if he used the right pronouns, the right side would go like feral and be like, oh, he's, oh, he's trans, he's trans. Didn't know that. I thought just calling Ava Tyson by her name was okay. And I had also heard when I went to the Mr. Beast thing, someone referred to Ava Tyson. It's a dumb nitpick. Yeah, it's, it's not really like it's an issue, really. He did address her by her current name. So it's not really too much of an issue. Been with they. Just a bit of a nitpick. So I was truly under the impression that that was okay. Uh, and for that, I was annihilated by a good chunk of Twitter. And then annihilated by another good chunk of Twitter because I called out sneak. The fence is comfy. The fence is actually the worst position to be in. It's like, it's like the spy from TF2, bro. It's high risk, high reward. You get everyone watching you, but then if you get in drama, all sides shun you. Why do you think uh, Dr. Disrespect right now is going down, you know, like anyone that's calling him like a groomer and stuff now, he's like calling out that they have pronouns in bio or calling them woke. It's like he's basically trying to hardline to the right to fortify himself because he knows like fence sitting is not an option anymore. You ha when you get into drama like that, you have to pick a side. Go, who was the main proponent about me covering for Mr. Beast to keep the collab alive. I wasn't talking about Ava Tyson because I wanted the Just Mr. Wanted Beast to collab. congratulate talk you on winning the low tier content wars against Charlie. Now you can feed your piggies all the slop you want. Also play Wadi Hug that gator. Thank you, Snoot Club. What is that game? That That's like some 4chan game. You keep asking that every stream. ...about how absurd that statement was, especially given his history with fighting against the age of consent. He's been very vocal about how much he hates the age of consent, and so I talked about that briefly at the end of the video, which then changed the whole narrative for a lot of people where I never talked about Ava Tyson and only talked about Sneeko. So it was a complete lose-lose, because if I didn't talk about what Sneeko was saying, I would have been called a coward for not addressing it and talking about, like, well, he was going to cover for Mr. Beast until Sneeko called him out. So, like, if I didn't do it, I would have been attacked. I did do it, still got attacked. It really was unwinnable. But from that spawned a conversation where I talked to Sneeko directly, because he was very upset that I was talking about how him rallying against the age of cons consent is pedophile arguments, like defending pedophilia. As I've said, since the very beginning of this channel, I'm always willing- it was, it was an awful argument, to be fair. And what I find so funny is like, when Charlie gets backed into a corner and he does the whole thing where it's like, yeah, anyone can get trans surgery. No one actually, like very few people clipped the bit afterwards in the stream where he takes it back. And he's like, oh, I thought it was like hyperbole, not an actual argument. Willing to engage with people. But that part wasn't shared around on Twitter. It was only like the initial kind of gotcha moment. I disagree hey, with and I- Rewatched the Fat Souls video. When are we getting a Dark Souls analysis video? Feel it would be something up your alley also with common knowledge. Your piss gameplay in DS3 makes sense now. Thank you, Delph, the 10. Thought that maybe there was a chance I misunderstood what- When are we getting a Dark Souls analysis? Ah, uh, probably never. I mean, like, Vati Vigis already killed it with that stuff. What he was trying to say, even though it's still abhorrent, I thought, okay, maybe he's not actually trying to defend pedophilia. He's like some kind of pseudo-intellectual debate bro who's trying to- Say something else, so I was willing I'll to hear him out. Forty-five Parabellum Bloodhound. Just an anime game. It's an anime game. Okay, it's bookmarked. Out on it, and I talked to him in DMs, and he said he doesn't believe in the age of consent. He believes in the age of marriage. Can't assign a number to it but said that when someone- This is a big L for Charlie for the take, but honestly, Sneeko only started this crap to start up crap again with him and to get attention for the drama. I, th this is what I think, and I said this last stream, I just think like, Sneeko thrives on debating and getting those like viral clips and stuff. That's the part of the internet he's from. That's his like bread and butter. And Charlie is not someone who's known for debating. He's probably not a very good debater. I'm not a good debater. Also so I think come it's... come back to Elden Ring. They brought back the Dragonstone for people like you. What does it do? Does it make you fat? 
when you delve the 10. Um, but yeah, I think it's more just in the sense of like, Sneeko is always in debating. He knows how to kind of like rile up those gotcha moments. But obviously Charlie is not used to being in that kind of environment of debating someone. So he just got caught lacking a little bit. Charlie's too nice. <laughs> I also agree with that as well. ...can legally drive, they should be able to marry at the same time. People should legally drive and marry at the same age. <laughs> Unless you're a woman. Is that driver's permit age 15 or driver's license age 16? As Muslims, we believe it's our duty to follow the law of the land. It wasn't a spiritual question. I have no issue with any faith at all. This is a personal belief question. Which is... Yeah, I noticed Sneeko has been like Muslim pilled. Literally like a 15 or 16 year old because you get your permit at 15, your license at 16, and both are way too young to be marrying. That shit is... Com I, I did DM Sneeko a couple of times on Twitter about Islam. Like when I was really hungover once, I was like... I think this was three years ago. I was really hungover and I DM'd him and I was like, oh, being hungover sucks. And I was like, don't Muslims not drink? And then we just talked about that for a little bit as well. Complete just over like DMs. Completely unacceptable. It is downright disgusting. He then said that he was happy to discuss it in a call, which I said I was willing to hear. You know, the news channel Vultures is going to eat this up. Yeah, probably. I'm out on and he said that he would do it later because he was outside doing an IRL stream in Turkey. So I was willing to hear him out because, again, if this is some kind of crazy misunderstanding. Sneeko drinks even though it's haram. So do many, many Muslims that I know. <laughs> I mean, you, you've seen the meme, right? Where it's like, you know, you'll get Muslims that like they'll drink alcohol even though it's haram. They'll smoke. But then, like, they'll, they'll get, like, a, a Domino's pizza, and they refuse to eat the pork on it because it's haram. I'd like to know that because it'd be really fucking scary for someone in his position with his level of influence to be actually advocating for adults marrying and fucking children. That's a huge... Drink alcohol, but pork, absolutely haram. Yeah, it's, it's pretty common with, like, a lot of Muslim kids, like, in their 20s and stuff. It's genius. Like, you know, it's like, I can't do... I mean, some, some Muslims will be so devout that they won't even drink coffee. Because coffee technically does affect the brain. Huge problem. That's a big fucking problem. So if there was something that he was like trying to say but failing to do so, I was willing to at least hear it. And this is where the infamous debate came from. The debate that people are calling the debate of the century. I'm kidding. Not a single soul on the planet said that. It's actually one of the most dog shit debates I think human beings have ever had. He eventually <laughs> called me on Discord. I was under the impression this was just him and I talking. I had no idea this was going to be a debate. I thought he was going to try and explain himself like, hey, no, this isn't actually what I meant. This is what I'm trying to say. Are you addicted to caffeine? Uh, probably. I mean, I have like two cups of coffee a day, I think. I just always have black coffee like espresso because I just love the taste. I really love the taste. I thought this was a conversation between him and I. But caffeine is a drug. It's like one of the few drugs that's legal that affects your brain. Not this kind of debate show that he was putting on for his audience. There is nothing in our DMs that indicated that's where it was going. When I joined the call, he... Did you see what happened in the Olympics with the trans girl? Do you mean the girl that wasn't trans? The girl that was born a woman, but she just had incredibly high tea? And then she bodied like this other woman? Asked if I was going to record it, to which I said... I can if he wants me to, but I was also down to just talk. I, so I thought maybe he wanted it as a Nico record. A pedophilic cockroach, he'd curl up and cry. I don't think so. I think he just debate you. Thing to like explain to people like, no, he's not actually a pedophile. The next Ultra Kill update is remastering the prelude and first act. Yeah, that that's exactly why I'm waiting on Ultra Kill, bro. Like, I, I want it to be like fully done before it goes out. I'll defender or advocating for that kind of thing. So I thought that is why he asked. I didn't know it was because it was being streamed, especially because one of his last DMs was about how he's doing an outside IRL stream and he would call me after. To me, that says when he's done streaming, that's when we'll talk, not as a part of his stream. I, I know this is off topic, but I really miss Sneeko's old vlogs. I used to watch them so much. And I, I know he probably gets this a lot. Like, I miss the old Sneeko. Hang on. Does he still have them? Ah, oh, these were so good. Feeling like I need something more. And like many others, I've tried to fill that void with attention, with drugs, with sex, and especially with love. It was, it was no fuckers that linked me Sneeko's channel when he was really small.
and he does these vlogs where he'll get like all these he'll basically just talk about life and stuff like that studies detailing and all the hand-drawn animation how the euphoria the of love elicits the same sensation in the brain as cocaine you crackheads no other species does this falling in love shit chimpanzees aren't sitting and then after that he did the debates right in the subway that's right that's right yeah that content was based thank you bad man for the gifted i didn't know Thank you, Samuel, for the tent. I don't drink caffeine every day, every morning. I'll get a splitting headache. Okay, that is addiction. This was a debate, nor a stream until about an hour and 40 into it, roughly somewhere in that ballpark. I am not a debater. I've never claimed to be one. Yeah. I never want to be a debater. Yeah. I've always said that I believe com- I, I've said this, I said this like last stream, like he's not a debater, like at all. So he was going to get bodied. Because debaters basically use tactics to kind of funnel you down a certain narrative that they want. And then also like hide it, like sitting on statistics to do like a gotcha moment. Conversations are the most productive because debates always devolve into what side can score the most points by explaining their thought process, even if the position is wrong. Whereas a conversation is a very different thing to me. So I didn't even know that's what this was. So obviously I was unprepared for a fucking debate. So I entered into the Thunderdome and we started talking. I made it clear that- <laughs> The Thunderdome. I found his statements on the age of consent and children marrying adults being fucking hideous. Absolutely revolting. And then he started arguing about, well, what is a child? We must de define a child, you know? It's not actually being under 18. It's, it's all a bunch of hooey. And I really think if you have to start arguing about, well, what technically is a child? You're already way too far gone. <laughs> Like, that is so fucking weird. And in no uncertain terms, multiple times throughout the debate, Sneeko says that he is okay with people that are aged 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, marrying adults that are 18 or older. There are We're talking globally. Let's just talk globally. Like, do you think it is okay for... I'm not talking about just you specifically anymore. Anyone. Do you think it's okay for anyone in their 20s, an adult, to marry a 15 or 16-year-old? A 21-year-old, if, if there was a, a marriage where the father consented and the daughter consented and it was both good on both families and they wanted to do it, why am I going to get involved? Why should we get the government involved? Even get back a little bit. Do you think there's not a problem with a child being with an adult? Okay. Was there a PewDiePie background? We haven't even agreed upon what, the de what a child and an adult is. You keep we, saying, you keep saying that it's 18. Under 18. That's child. I know age of consent is different like, per country. Like America seems to have the logic of like, Anything under 21 is a child. And then, like, in the UK, the age of consent is, like, 16. But then, also, like, yeah, I think you'd be able to know what a child is. And I'm telling you, that's not even the definition of the word. I remember in Japan, wasn't it, like, like 12 or something in Japan? It was, like, so comedically low, it actually almost came across like it was a bit... And then in Japan, they've recently raised it to 18 because they were like, okay, that was pretty fucking bad. What is the number? I just it told needs you to be a number or else you can do the same thing. I just told you there's not a number. Do you, but do you see why that's a problem? No. That if there's no defined... US is 18. It is 18. But then you'll have some people that will use basically saying like, even if you're 18, you, you, you're a child. Or if you're 19, you're a child. And if you're 20, you're a child. And then you're 21, you're an adult. It always just seems to be changing. Like, like they keep like goalposts being moved and stuff. So why, why can't a 12-year-old marry an 18-year-old? Because most 12-year-olds haven't gone through puberty yet. And most 12-year-olds... Okay. Well, as you just said, it changes. What if a 12-year-old went through puberty early, the parents consent, the 18-year-old and the parents consent? Can they do it? Most likely that's not going to happen. You know why? Because Islamically... Well, if, if We're not talking most likely. Just say it. If the why? families have consented... I'm actually surprised Sneeko disagreed with that. I'm, I'm very surprised that Sneeko disagreed Check with that. The, game out the kid is mature. It's not your usual the kid is ready, name, but you may like it. It's a lot more than meets the eye at first. Thank you for the 10, Anon. Also, thanks for all the great content these last few years. You've been a great help getting through long COVID. It's 16 in Japan. I'm pretty sure they raised it to 18. It's been 18 in Tokyo for a while. Okay. Philippines used to be 12. <laughs> it's, it, it is like, it is almost like comedic how low it is and it's awful. Why should I stop at 12 it? 12 years old. At 12 years old. If the kid is, is if the kid is physically mature, the parents consent, both parties are happy. A 12 year old being physically mature. If it's, that's the only, that's the only line that actually makes sense. Again, I don't think a 14 year old can ever be physically mature. Mm -hmm. Even though, uh, even though they literally can. Even, even though, even though puberty actually defines that, it's fine. 
Um, I don't, nope, I don't, I don't believe so. I was 14 once. But I, I actually had a mustache when I was 14. Would you have looked at me and said I was physically mature enough to get married? If you were, if you were physically mature, if, if you were mature, yes, I would. Okay. Really? If you're, if when you're I was 14. I could totally believe that he had a fully grown mustache at 14. Like, I'm 27 now, and I tried to buy a Red Bull from M&S the other day, and I got ID'd for it. Yeah. If you were 14 and you were ready to go, and you, you met another 14-year-old, yes, I would. No, 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 no. We're talking adults. You, you keep going back to that. That is adult. I met... I, I told you my definition. Oh, so, oh, Not, I told you the definition. The definition. Okay. If Charlie isn't cancelled, it's just storming a teacup. Yeah, no, he'll, he'll just keep uploading, and it's fine. I just think this debate... I don't want to like pocket watch him and speak on his behalf, even though I'm literally about to. But I feel like this whole debate and the backlash from it made him kind of realize, dude, I'm like nearly 30 and I'm like caring about internet drama. That is so sad. Like I need to actually kind of cut away Blaze from the internet. The blue, please, and thank you. Thank you, Charchi, for the 10. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like he had like... This kind of epiphany where it's like dude my entire hey, life is just revolving London around awesome. hang on i like my entire life is revolving around the internet right now i need to take a step back because my job is making me terminally online like i have moments like that as well where it's like okay i'm kind of spending a bit too much time online i need to go away for a couple of days just have some time off that kind of thing hey biro fallout london video was awesome thank you Showed after my the grandpa 10. the video and he thought it a good show Keep up the good work. Fuck a good snicker. show. If you were went through puberty, you're an adult. That's the definition of adult. So yes, if you're an adult and you had a mustache, you're ready to get married, fine, okay? And ironically saying a 14-year-old adult, I think would make most sensible people want to puke. There's so many instances of this and a lot of the conversation was spent with him talking about like overseas age of consent, like talking about how Japan's age of consent was 13. Charlie's 30 tomorrow. Is he actually... Oh, okay. That, that's funny timing to the point I just made. Teen for the longest time, this and that. Uh, but the whole thing was like pulling teeth and it was fucking painful. And I think it's extremely alarming perspective. No one cares. It's what he said in a rough take. I'll be honest. When I saw the clip that was shared all over Twitter of Charlie smiling when he said like anyone can get gender affirming surgery, like no matter what age, I kind of took that as like he was so sick of like Sneeko's choke point debates that he just laughed and he was like, yeah, I don't care anymore. Yeah, sure. Fuck it. Yeah. Anyone can, anyone can change their genitals or whatever. That's how I interpreted it personally. Effective to have. You know, like you just can't be arsed debating anymore. Ironically calling a 14 year old and basically doing the equivalent of throwing. 12 year old mature enough for a marriage. Those are middle schoolers. Like, holy shit. I think that is extremely concerning to be advocating for something like that. Like, would Sneeko be okay if his best friend ended up marrying a 14-year-old? Uh, he sh certainly shouldn't be. No one should be okay with something like that. Like, that's fucking terrible. That is actually terrible. But now, since I wasn't, like, holding him to this topic or making sure it stayed on the topic I thought we were talking about... It Hitting 30 is death in TikTok standards? That's like being an 80-year-old, basically. It went all over the place with a ton of different things, but the big one, and this is what most people have focused on, which was my response to his question about kids transitioning and the way he would pose that- I do want to hear what his reasoning is behind this, because I feel like I've been speaking on his behalf. But, yeah, I've re I'm really interested now. My question now. would be by asking if I thought it was okay- Thank you, man, for the five. I stayed in a cabin with no internet all this past week, and it was amazing how great I felt mentally. Yeah, there's an Asian guy, a uh, British Asian guy, Mr. Who's the Boss, who reviews phones and stuff. He spent, like, a week living in, like, a cottage with his wife, and basically had no internet access. They just had, like, paper and pen and stuff like that, like, no electricity. And they said it was really refreshing. Hey, if kids who want to switch their gender go to the doctor and get their dick cut off, is it okay if a nine-year-old goes to a doctor and gets their cock cut off right then and there? And when posed hey, with that Pyro, question, sorry I for dropping this on you, Liv, but I don't have you in the M's dot. Should I make a video about the rumple stuff? I don't really do drama, but I will. Uh, that's up to you. I mean, just obviously make sure you get everything factually correct because allegations are very, very serious. I hate you. Thank you, Anna, for the ten. And with yes. And I've talked about this on stream many, many times now, and I'll talk about it again here. I thought he was talking in hyper- Hitting 30 was better than 20. Yeah, because I guess in your 20, it's still a time where you're trying to find yourself and stuff. 
And then when you're actually in your 30s, you kind of know what you're doing, <laughs> hopefully. Verbally. I thought he was just exaggerating being over the I feel that I feel your, your 20s are definitely a time where you're finding yourself the most though definitely the top talking about the entire subject of transitioning I had no idea that any living breathing human being actually thought that that's how transitioning works where you just go into a doctor saying I feel like switching genders and they lay you down on the operating table and just snip there's your whole fucking There's a good reason meat. why people are fence sitters. That threw me off so much. I mean for fuck's sake there's a reason why my response exists you're basically exhibit A. Why you shouldn't just believe any random dickhead on Twitter. Thank you, Charlie, for the 10. Dude, Charlie's watching my stream. That's based. It off. I didn't know that that's what he actually believed. I, I didn't know he was speaking literally. I thought he was just referring to the entire process of transitioning and just using this over-the-top statement to encapsulate all of it. Because you literally cannot get that surgery unless you are 18. Yeah, like, you actually have to go out of your way to be that stupid on the topic than you would just spinning- See, I, I didn't know this, because this is, again, how little informed I am on the whole trans debate. I didn't know that you could get puberty blockers under 18. They basically paused your puberty, so then you could make the decision when you're an adult. To me, that makes sense, because then you don't have to get that life-changing surgery, life- permanently life-altering surgery, until you're an adult and you know the choice you want to make because i thought because i thought originally you basically get the surgery or you don't and there's nothing else i didn't know that i thought all the estrogen and stuff you got was afterwards i didn't know that in a couple of seconds looking it up there are your entire mod team is trans talk to us about it lol <laughs> Holy based. Very rare cases where someone under 18 has- So no wonder everyone's asking me to play Ultra Kill all the time. Had that- HRT isn't a surgery. No, I, I know that. I know that. Surgery performed. That's not common. So I really didn't think that someone- Puberty blockers are life-changing. Someone in chat just said there's no, like, there's no permanent effects of puberty blockers, though. Could be so dumb on the topic. I thought- he was just speaking in hyperbole, which is my mistake. I should have been more clear instead of making an assumption that he was talking about something nuanced in an over-the-top way. I haven't hid this take, and it's not a new take from me. I've talked about this a couple times throughout the years on stream. and hunger on TBH. Do you ever plan on making a main channel vid on the two games? I do, yeah. I, I want to cover each game like in its own individual video. I have no complaints if a kid gets interested in transitioning and starts talking to their family about it. So their parents start talking to doctors, the kid starts talking to doctors and therapists and all of this because the process of transitioning is one that takes place over the course of many years. It's not something that just happens like that. And I'm also not afraid to admit that I am not the most educated when it comes to transitioning. I am not someone that has a ton- Yeah, I think- I think it is a huge rabbit hole, and I don't even think it's like- you know how, like, everyone covering the Drake- hang on, I'm gonna skip this one, I'm gonna skip this dono, sorry. I- sorry, it's just bad time. Whenever I'm about to, like, say something big, a dono pops up and it just throws me off. I'll- I'll, I'll replay it in a sec. But yeah, I know, like, you know how like Ludwig and Critical and me, we all were like, I don't listen to rap, but I'm going to talk about Metro's booming track. Here you go, bro. You know, and we're using that as a cover, but I genuinely agree with Charlie. Like, I'm not well versed in it at all either. Because again, it's like, you know, you talk to your parents about wanting to go trans, you go down that route. But again, it's like your parents influence everything, bro. It's like, are your parents going to be comfortable with you doing it? Maybe their parents, they're incredibly against it. Maybe they're parents that push you down that path, even though you might not want to go down that path. Because like I said earlier, you might just, you know, play with like girls stuff as a boy or play with boys stuff as a girl. And then, you know, your parents might think, oh, they're trans. Let's get them like, you know, let's get them down that path right now when they're young. So, you know, we can get like the optimal transition or whatever, because I, I'm not that that sounds like some rhizoid cope, by the way. But like, I've literally seen that happen in like a documentary that was covering like this family in Sweden it does happen but then on the other end of the spectrum you've got like parents that don't want their parents that don't want their kids to go trans and then the kid feels like locked in locked in the kid feels lost trapped can't transition and then that makes them hate life even more because they're not even being given that choice it, it's it is a huge debate
a huge debate that I do not have enough Fallout intelligence. Enough I'm going to skip this dono. Sorry, I'll replay it in a second. I don't have enough intelligence stat in my Fallout build to properly talk about it. This is like intelligence 11 build. I am on like intelligence 3 at most. Right, what's this dono? People choose literally the weirdest hills to die in. Like it would be one thing to have a bad take and then change your mind. But for someone like Sneeko to hold that belief, I think he legitimately means it. And people agree with him, it's concerning. You'll always have people on Enough the internet that agree Charlie, with you. where is Betscope 2 man I'll give you two dollars. I introduced my GF to Cry of Fear and she liked it, thank Based. you. Thank you Twink for the 10, thank you Rich for the 10. I mean, you can have like the, the worst opinions on the internet or the most divisive and you will still have a sector of the internet that still respects you. Like that's just common knowledge kind of knowledge about the subject the only way you can actually annihilate everyone on i mean even look at boogie like boogie's someone that's betrayed his fan base loads of times and he still has people that watch him because they he's reached that point where he's like a lol cow you know no matter how far you fall you will always still have people that watch you like no matter what even if they just want to check in and see how much you fell off like a uh, mini lad right mini lad could come back now start uploading he would not have a single person support him i guarantee he'd be full of haters and stuff but he'd still get viewers. So no matter what, you still do garner an audience. No matter what you've said or what controversy you've been in. To be speaking on it in a really in-depth manner. But even I know these very surface level things that everyone has easy access to, to understand. It's almost that morbid thing, right? Like you can't look away from a car crash. It's like, ooh, how's, what's happening with Mini Lad? What's he doing? It is a long process. And I have no problems at all if a kid gets interested in that process and starts going through that process with proper care. And then when they reach the age where they can consider that surgery and decide they want to do it, then that's all power to them. That's entirely up to them. They have reached that age. They are, can now do that surgery if they want to. That is. Yeah, I totally agree with him. I, I really do. I think, you know, calling back to the story that I told when I was younger, like I was under 18 and I wanted to go through that leg lengthening surgery. I think I was like 17 or something. I'm so happy I I'm so happy I snapped out of that body dysmorphia and you sometimes you don't snap out of it and it follows you for life and that's the point where you need to realize okay I need to do something about it but sometimes it can just be temporary it's not a surgery that's being offered to like a nine-year-old who just says I feel like changing genders today it's just not how it works and I didn't think that that's what was actually being discussed. I do like it though. It's it was worded in such a manipulative way. It's like, would you let a child mutilate their genitals? It's like, you know, let's let's craft this sentence to say the most evil words imaginable. So no matter what answer you give, will end bad for you. Just because it's so fucking silly. Now I'm sure there's some really fringe cases you can point to where that kind of thing did. Ha Trans rights. Yeah, they're they're all right. They're all right happen but it's not common thus i didn't think that's what was being referred to in the conversation and it is again my mistake for not recognizing bro lost the second he said yes yeah this is what they do in debates though they they put you in that kind of like they put you in that yes or no they put that in that yeah in that yes or no thing where it's like if you say yes you're screwed if you say no you're screwed that's exactly what they want using that at that moment it was being spoken about literally so all that shit that people keep dogpiling and spouting about me about how i want all kids to go out there and get their genitals chopped off is just fucked up like, it's so it's so ridiculous i recognize i did a horrible job of arguing in this debate i saw this meme once that kind of made me laugh i think i brought this up a couple of times you know the meme where it's like the disney castle on the left and it looks really happy and then on the right it's the hell castle and it's like a little kid and he's got like two paths and someone put it on twitter and they said something like I swear, if you watched Leafy or Parasynical, you're now like completely left wing or completely right wing. Which isn't surprising considering I hey, don't. Byro, do are you still interested in playing Eternal Darkness for a main channel video? Asking since I have a few copies and it could be a prop for the video. Thank you, Spats, for the ten. Uh, I might do Eternal Darkness at some point. I mean, if you if you got a copy to spare, I won't say no. You can send it to my PO box. Bait. This is not. You're the lefty one, I reckon. No, definitely not. I'm. I. I. I still say the M word every single video. Something that's in my skill set, which of course led to some embarrassingly dog shit. It's true, Power. You're the reason I'm racist. <laughs> and there we have it. Arguments like the one I've seen people reference a couple times. Good night, Pookie. Thank you, Dex, for the five. Is when I briefly mentioned sports in this topic. It was a stupid Pyro point to try I and. I asked you to drop Darkwood vid and you cucked me. Today is my birthday. 
Could you say happy please? You got me into YouTube docs, no diddy. Thank you, happy please. For the 10. Happy please day. Jake, I was getting hit by like some rebound psychic damage listening to some of the drivel brain rot that Sneeko was spouting about the age of consent. And I don't know why I thought this was like <laughs> an argument to try and make, but I brought up sports in this subject and I was going to try and elaborate on it, but didn't at all. What I was going to try and say is that when a kid gets interested in a sport, they'll talk to their parents about it. They'll research the sport, you know, go through the process of learning about it. And when it comes to transitioning, it's still a process where you talk to your family about it, you learn about it. Like, it was a, it, like, it wasn't a point where I was trying to say, well, changing genders is a lot like picking between baseball and soccer. Like, it's not what I was trying to get at, but because I didn't elaborate on it and it really wasn't a good argument to try and make in the first place, that's one people have harped on a lot. And I get it. Like I said, I am... That's one thing I don't like as well about the internet. It's like, Charlie would have had, like, one moment where he got caught in a gotcha, and then they clip it and share it everywhere and make it out that like, oh, he said this, anything else he says is completely debased. That's why debates are scary, because it's live. If you say one thing wrong, it will be clipped and used against you by like the other team. Not a debater. Like, I didn't go in here expecting a debate. So I had nothing prepared here for this inundation of outrageous questions and tangents. I think to be fair, the fallout of this is probably one of the reasons why Ludwig didn't want to push that, that dog guy. The guy that made the Mr. Beast video, he kind of just labeled him as a troll and just like didn't want to call him back. I mean, he was trolling, definitely, but I think the fallout of this was like, okay, I'm not Gender touching that. Gender dysphoria and body dysmorphic disorder, which is dysmorphia, isn't the same thing. Stop misrepresenting. I suggest you look up the NHS website for both of those very separate things so you don't look stupid. Gender dysmorphia and body dysmorphia are two different things. I mean, I've already said I'm not well educated on it. Like, I think, like, I think even if I'm not well educated on something, I'm still allowed to kind of express my opinion, though. Even if, you know, I get some stuff wrong. Because, you know, I talked about, like, my body dysmorphia. And I kind of took that as in, like, people that feel like they're trans. That's still, like, how they represent themselves in their own body. Because I've had a lot of people that tell me that they're trans, like, before transitioning. It's like, I don't feel comfortable in my own skin. And my brain instantly made that connection to like body dysmorphia because you don't feel comfortable in your own body. Like, I don't think it's, I mean, I'm probably wrong, but it's not like it's too far to not say. Basically, what, what I'm saying is I would much rather talk about this stuff on stream with you guys and get some of it wrong than be too scared to never talk about it and just leave it as an elephant in the room. I think that would be a huge L on my part. So I'd rather say something and get it wrong and be corrected and learn on it then actually, you know, just being like, oh, I, I can't talk about the, the, the trans thing. That's scary. I could say something wrong. Ooh. Like there was a point where Sneeko was trying to get me to say white power. Like the whole <laughs> thing was a fucking mess. It was. Okay. Can we find that clip? That sounds funny. I, I want to see Without that. Without a doubt. Probably the worst debate. I want to see that. That video has ever <laughs> been cursed with. And I really regret not doing a better job here. It's not something I should have even done in the first place. I just have a tendency to really hope for the best out of people. And I was- Someone said, well, actually, I don't know. Really hoping that I and most people were wrong about Sneeko's perspective on the age of consent. However, unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be the case. He was very adamant- white, white, Save white power right now. About this position. And I did a terrible job in arguing with him. And I did a terrible job of articulating my beliefs. I am supportive of the LGBTQ+, and I have been, and that's not something I've been shy about. No, he's woke. He's woke. Everyone on sub from him now, he's woke. I just wish I did a better job. The message, the message hey, has Pyro, got to him. When are you gonna get oiled up and ride me raw dog? I told you, I told you he's LGBT, I told you. He just said that right now, and then he just made that dono on my channel, I told you. I'm expressing that. To be open and honest here, and I've talked about this a lot, I've always hey, treated Bono, my channel kind of like a diary for myself. Which is meme. Also, when are you gonna play I Wanny Hug the Gator? Why does everyone want me to play that game? This is why I just talk about so much yeah, different alert. nonsense and so many things that I know a lot of people don't give a fuck about, but some of it's fun for me to talk about, or some of it's just things I care about. Dealt with both body and gender, dysmorphia, and in my personal experience, the feelings with not feeling right in my own body was similar. Okay. So being totally honest. I the dono was right though. I mean, the dono could have been right. But again, I still want to be able to talk about this stuff and feel like I don't want it to be like an elephant in the room, you know? 
Like, I'm very sure my uh, my mod team and a lot of them are trans are going to call me a fucking idiot after this stream saying I got half the stuff wrong. But I'd rather actually talk about it than just ignore it. I... Trans swag. Can you replace the S with the dollar sign, Flazfire, please? Used to treat the internet as an escape from my dog shit real life. Truly unhappy, really hated most of everything about myself. And the internet was my escape from it. But now it's really become that real life is the escapism for me now. Like, I love posting and creating things, but I don't like interacting with the internet around me anymore. And it's something that I started to realize a couple months ago, and I've talked about it on stream a little bit, how... Yeah, I, I did talk about this uh, when he released that... Well, when his mate released that statement about him leaving the actual... Uh, the podcast. I think, like, he might admit this now, but I think it's like, he's so terminally online with his job. Because if you want to, yeah, like, I'll be life, honest, like, it's, it really does take a toll on you because it is like, you're just looking, you're monitoring drama all the time. It's like, you know, you talk about drama, you record drama for slop, and then you go to bed, you scroll TikTok. I'll get a story that comes to me at three in the morning. And then, you know, before I go to bed, it will be like, hey, can we do some more research on this? So I've got like something to record when I wake up. Can you link me some articles and stuff? It's just never ending like slop. And it really does get to you. And then you kind of realize it's like, okay, the money's good which is great but then it's like i'm really fucking terminally online like i need to actually like stop being online so much i mean that's one of the reasons Your why entire chat support enslaving hang on hang on uh i will uh while being why, why do i i always get like 50 donors whenever i'm about to fucking talk that's so annoying it's like whenever i watch the video it just doesn't like actually no one donates um i've lost my train of thought god damn it oh yeah um uh, i feel like he kind of realized how terminally online his job was. And I feel that as well. You know, like I'm 27 now. I'm like an old man. It's I'm not living day to day anymore with my like, I'm basically trying to make as much money as I can from YouTube to like support my family and stuff and do the next step, you know, and obviously make the main channel videos better and stuff like that. Because originally when I was doing YouTube like five years ago and stuff, and I was doing like daily commentary Andy stuff like like with the leafy gameplay, like the prototype gameplay, I just wake up, do a video and then play video games. But now, as you get older, you kind of realize, okay, there's a lot more to life. And it's like, by me sitting behind the computer talking about drama, it's like, <sighs> I got bled. All right. Uh, what's this one? Oh, oh, we got, okay. Let's play this Your one. Your entire also. chat support enslaving kids to hormone enslaving subscriptions. Enslaving kids to you hormone subscriptions. then placed massive restrictions. Why can't US? You really gonna let mods me ban for that? You got You're banned? You're not a PDF. The next Chris Tyson. I didn't know you got banned, but the way how aged that dono was, unlucky. I mean, th this is probably the same kind of people that like, because of what happened with Ava, with all the disgusting shit that she did that she should be condemned for, that like, you, you, you're probably the kind of person that thinks that all trans people are like that. Just complete like, pre... Just pre-bias to like, everything. But yeah, I didn't know you got banned, but the fact that you got banned, unlucky. While unlucky. Being work is not at all a bad thing, and has been flipped to seem bad by a majority of people. Insulting someone for being wrong is not the way you should teach people something. I hope that Dono does better. Thank you, Vic, for the 10. Someone said insane asylum Dono. Oh. Yeah, what did you say again? What, what was the buzzword you pulled up? Hang on. Enslaving kids to EU hormone subscriptions. What in the dollar shave club are you saying? Complete mental illness. To be fair, Austin, I don't know who you are. I have no beef with you. Thank you for joining the stream. But obviously, yeah, I could, I could immediately tell as soon as I wasn't instantly condemning Charlie, your tone changed completely. So you obviously already had like a preconception in your head. And as soon as I went against that, you kind of went feral. Because I've covered so many like drama stories and everything, it's pretty much all that I ever get told about when I'm streaming. And it's become such a massive headache. And it's just constant negativity that I'm fully flooded with like at all hours like i am in like this human centipede of eating someone's ass while having my ass eaten with even more things that i'm being demanded to like talk about where everything I, what, one of the criticisms i saw about charlie as well is like on the podcast he basically says nothing like he's not very vocal and i do kind of feel him on that 
uh, I feel his little nuts. Because, like, in the sense of, if Charlie says, if one of his friends has a bad take, right? It's like, okay, it's whatever. You're one of Charlie's friends. Who cares? But then, if Charlie says something that's bad, it's going to get clipped and shared everywhere. And you're kind of always on, like, high alert and stuff like that. And podcasts are usually when that stuff happens because it's unscripted. That's when, like, a bad opinion can actually, like, slip through the cracks and be used against you. Thing just feels like a lose-lose and it has been for like the last six or eight months i feel where if just like you want to be honest i i was actually very vocal on the latest episode the one uh i don't know if it's out yet i probably spoke more in that episode than i've ever spoken in an episode before if i talk about something it's a problem even if something is cut and dry as like cody ko having sex with a 17 year old being bad i caught a lot of shit for that too where did that go by the way everyone stopped talking about that we've got dr disrespect we've got ava I'm even having people message me about Mr. T Lexify every stream, but like no one is asking about Cody. It's crazy. I've heard he's not going to acknowledge it and he's going to keep it quiet because it might mess with his citizenship. Uh, for getting an American citizenship. Because I think they do look into your history and stuff uh, when you're trying to go into America. And obviously there's a video of him being like, oh, I did it, guys. I'm sorry. Like he probably won't get the citizenship. So maybe that's why, or maybe he might get the citizenship and then he might respond to it. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people probably didn't see that, but man, the amount of emails I got and a lot of the things I was seeing, even something as cut and dry as that was an issue when I talked about it. And then if I don't talk about- I, I saw someone basically saying that Cody was going to go down the route of like his DJ career, but I don't believe that. He'd get heckled and stuff, definitely. You lied about what I said. You petrified of your chat, which makes you complicit. You don't play subscription service enslavement. Do you think minors should be sold subscription services to hormones? Yes or no? <laughs> Why are you doing a sneako here? I, I've literally just spent like an hour explaining how bad it is to be funneled into a yes or no question. And now you said, do you think minors should be sold subscription service to hormones? Like you're making it out that they go door to door and it's like, oh, here's some hormones. You should take them. You should change from a boy to a girl. <laughs> Someone said rent free. Do you think minors should be sold? Okay, Austin, I do think I do think minors should be sold subscription services for hormones, but only only if you go door to door and give it to all of them. There you go. But something or if I don't talk <laughs> It's just like the the most narrow the, the, the most na like holy gotcha moment. About something fast <laughs> enough so in the time stupid. that some people think is appropriate. I'm then accused of covering up for something for an ulterior evil motive. So it just really feels like a rock and a hard place where regardless, it's just going to be a massive flood of negativity. And a huge critique of me that I've always seen is Charlie's a fence sitter. He's just a fucking fence sitting enlightened. I, I always see that like in viral TikToks and stuff. I'll always see clips of like Charlie fence sitting. And then the top comment will always be like, are we really that bored that we're going after critical now? Interest cuck this and that. And I've always said for the entire time I've been on the internet, I'm not special. I'm literally just a normal guy who got very lucky. I just sit here, joke about shit, talk about my opinion on things, and nothing else. I don't have a unique perspective on things. I don't have deep insight into the vicissitudes of certain things. I am literally just a guy who yaps, has some fun, talks about shit, does some wacky stuff as well, and that's it. It's just not that deep. Thank you, kid, for the five. What is Blood waffling about? This man hasn't been outside since 2016. It's like, he's allowed to disagree, right? Like, you're allowed to disagree if you think it's wrong. But it's like, you know, saying that I'm petrified of my chat and you're complicit. And do you think kids should be given a subscription service for hormones? It's like, hmm, I don't know. I feel like this... This question might be a little bit biased. I'm not really sure. Like if it was asked in like a more like cordial way, like a like a friendly way or just more neutral, then it's like, okay, I'd probably explain both sides. But something like that, it's like, nah, I'm good, bro. But because everything is so inflammatory and charged online, it's being perceived in the last, I'd say like the last two years, it's really popped off as me making deliberate attempts to appease both sides and play right down the middle to soak up as much as possible. Like it's it's all this like nefarious scheme where I'm doing this with my hand. Oh, we got more donos. Who we got this time? Let's have a look. Men, ready the battle stations. We've got more donos coming in. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. Everyone is entitled to it. <laughs> so true.
Hi Pyro, just chiming in to say how unfathomably based you are. Don't let yourself get derailed by idiotic transphobes. Talking about that conspiracy more on donating before. Thank you, idiot, for the 10. Are you on estrogen? No. And I just don't understand how it's become so- I am- I am not trans and I never will be trans. Despite the fact that I've dressed up as a woman. So incendiary where that's apparently like a really bad thing now. My opinion is not special. And my opinion isn't one that's pandering to any sides or catering to anything. It's literally just whatever's up here. I sit down for like 30 to 45 minutes on like a topic or like a video that I'm joking around about. And I talk about it. I am legitimately just an average well- Someone said estrogen Andy. <laughs> below average height guy who's about to turn 30. I'm not just spitting hot takes out the wazoo here. I'm just being myself. That's all this channel ever has been. And now it's become super controversial to do that if it's not like, you know, picking sides on everything it seems. And it's very frustrating. For the longest time, it was just me having fun, and for the most part it still is, but I've started to recognize over the last few months that some of the things I do just really aren't fun for me to do, and I've been doing them out of obligation. Mainly internet- Finn's just said he wasn't trans, lol, that age. Well, no, he was- he was actually coping. Like, he was definitely taking estrogen the entire time. Like, that was- that was Cap. That was Cap Sason, definitely. That drama. When I initially started covering drama so many years ago now, it was fun because it wasn't as serious. Like the stories were a lot, you know, more quirky. It, it was easy to get invested because it was kind of just like a soap opera, like a really dumb soap opera. But recently it's been much more serious and I feel the need to talk about these things because a lot of them are extremely serious with very important topics to discuss. Didn't respond to my donation before unsubscribed. Us. Are you- is, isn't that the guy that posted the thing on the reddit where you were just lying? Is that the same guy? I recognize the boondocks profile picture. But it has become draining. As much as I never wanted to admit it, I've started to recognize that my mood is immediately impacted by whatever I read on Twitter in the morning. If that's some horrible stuff about a creator or what have you, it immediately affects my- What was the lie? Uh, there was a picture that was posted of me at Insomnia with uh, a, a kid that was dressed up as Shadman. And I think it might be that guy, but someone posted it on Reddit because they stole it from Twitter. And they basically were just lying, saying that it actually was Shadman. And like me and him were besties when it was literally just a guy cosplaying as him. And then Twitter ran with it as well, basically acting like uh, it was actually him. Besides all the memes, how do you balance time spent on a video to keeping a consistent upload schedule? My channel is deceased. Thank you, CF3 for the 10. How'd you balance time? I balance time very badly. Time management is like my weakest. My 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 time management is one of the weakest things. Uh, I really need to improve on that. Entire day and my whole outlook on the day. Now I know when- I do agree with Charlie here though. Like if you just go onto Twitter, your mood is instantly ruined. It's crazy. I call the wambulance, get some French cries, just fucking whining about having to talk about drama. What a what a stupid problem to be upset about. But I'm just trying to explain that it hasn't been as fun hey, recently. Byron, first it hasn't. Time Dono been and watching since Keemstar leaked your face. Have you seen the whole Mr. Plexify situation? If you need a great laugh, look at the chat logs he posted. Oh, anyway, man. To to your Don't say if you need a laugh, look through the chat logs. I, I've skimmed through them and it is like... It is sad. It is really sad. The main thing, if you've been around... The yeah, I do agree, though. Like, looking at negativity, I mean, it's called doom scrolling. You look at Twitter, you look at stuff that... they uh, Twitter is purposely hard-coded to show you things that make you angry. Because then you keep scrolling. And what you see in between each scroll, you see an ad. ...channel for a while is I've always wanted this to be fun and never feel like a job. And as hard as it is for me to admit this, a lot of this kind of stuff... Like, I don't check Twitter at all, honestly. Apart from uh, streams, like me checking a tweet. Like I've got this burner Twitter account I use to access tweets because you can't access tweets without having an account anymore. I don't use Twitter ever. I basically, I will log into it to tweet something and then immediately log out. It's not worth it 
Because I remember, like, I was scrolling through it. I was making myself miserable. And you know the worst thing about all of that is? I was doing it for free. For free. I was making myself miserable for free. And if you're not making any money off it, there's no point. We need Leafy back. I'd love a Leafy return. He should come back. Are you clown for the five? Uh, saw your opinion on drama on YouTube being depressing. Just want to check that my favorite de degenerate is not depressed. No, I just think there's been so much like... It, it, there's been so much heavy drama recently. It's like all this grooming stuff just back to back to back to back. You just get like... You just do get sick of it. It's like, Jesus, another one? Like, fucking hell. It has just started to feel like less fun and more of... Well, gotta do this because I'm expected to. Like, anytime I go live... I use Twitter for porn. All right, it's probably... It's a little bit better than doom scrolling, I guess. Thank you, Sam, for the 10. I don't watch the news anymore. Yeah, my sister's the same. If I eat dinner with my sister, uh, she basically just says to me, like, can we not watch the news? Because it just makes me sad. And it's like, yeah, fair. I've, most of chat is just telling me about the latest in whatever's happening. Like, especially all the things that's happened in UK news. You had, like, that attack with the 17-year-old that stabbed all those little girls at the Taylor Swift workshop. You'll probably want to refer to it as and... transitioning rather than... Sorry, hang on. And then as well, uh, the, the Hugh Edwards stuff, the BBC News reporter that had pictures of, of kids in a WhatsApp chat. And then in Bath as well, there was a woman going around like doing chemical attacks on people. She had a substance in a bag that was making people ill. It was, it was just like sad news after sad news after sad news. Champ Chong, You'll sad probably news. probably want to refer to it as transitioning rather than turning trans as that's a disrespectful way to phrase it. Not trying to hero, just informing. Love you, little guy. All right. Thanks for the 10, Yuri. Something in the creator space or some other, like, extremely negative thing going on. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to have to learn all about that. Southport stabbing has been very hard on me as a local. They've only recently named the kid as well. I, I have a feeling it's the same as the Plymouth shooter where it's like incel situation. I watch people the kid die on Stallone. Instagram reels as a true Sigma show. Thank you, cute and funny for the 10. Once I turn stream off, so then I spend a few hours learning about these things, and it's all just really upsetting stuff. Hey, like, it's Tyro. not happy. I always wanted to say you're a big inspiration to me and have driven me to start creating things I've always wanted to. Keep doing you, bro. Thank you, loopholes. The ten Right, I, I want to listen to what Charlie said here, because that that's important. On. It's like, okay, well... I'm going to have to learn all about that once I turn stream off, so then I spend a few hours learning about these things, and it's yeah. all just really upsetting stuff. Like, it's not happy. It's all very sad, bad stuff. And it's... So, do you see what he's saying there? It's like, he ends stream, and then he's spending his downtime, because he streams pretty late in the day, right, in America. It's usually the afternoon or evenings. Instead of, like, relaxing and, like, you know, having some, like, TLC time, like, time to himself, he's, like, researching, like, all this, like, grooming stories and, like, people dying and stuff like that. And that's, like, his own spare time. Like, it, it does just eat away at you if, if all you're looking at is negativity. It's wild. It's been making me not happy. So I definitely think I'll be slowing down on covering internet-related drama or, like, drama in general. Depressed Jesus. I'll still... T okay, that's interesting. He did say he's going to do a content shift. That's interesting. On uncovering internet-related drama or, like, drama in general. I'll still talk about, like, really wacky stories and shit like that. But I, I definitely think I'm going to be pumping the brakes on, like... The, the kind Five of drama I have been... now one of my favorite games. I played it three times for my GF. I've been playing Far Cry with my GF ever since I showed her the Fat Cry 3 video. Thanks, Pyro. Love you, no homo. Thank you, Zombie, for the 10. That's interesting. So he's going to do a content shift. He's, like, moving away from drama. I'll be honest. That's based. I respect it. It's probably just hit him a little bit too hard. It's just a brain drain. Because even I've felt it. You know, it's like talking about the ava stuff on stream and then cody co and then dr disrespect and it's like back to back to back and it's like oh my god bro like i'm so sick of this now i'm so sick of all these like grooming allegations like it, it, it's just so yeah ludwig said the same thing yeah i i watched that video yesterday where he uploaded that video you do just get sick of it like commentary channels right now are eating good but i would not be surprised if a lot of them are getting just like psychological burnout from just how depressing all the all the news is to talk about covering recently and instead i'm gonna go back to focusing on the content that i'm most happy with it, it's good he's saying that as well because i feel like that'll be like a bit of a callback i mean i'll be honest will he get the views he's getting right now no he won't but who cares the guy's made his like tens of millions 
Like that didn't break a mil. That's on six mil. So it's just always that drama Andy. And then uh, what else was... Where else is the drama stuff as well? Uh, wasn't there another... Dr oh yeah, Cody Co. There you go. Yeah, 5.7 mil. Yeah, it's just... it's. He will definitely... You definitely always get more views talking about drama. But it can just be like... Oh, it's all the same. Like, if you ask me what content I'm most proud of throughout my entire time on this platform for the last, like, 17, 18 years... It's especially because of TikTok and stuff as well. Like, you know, I will... I'll go to bed. I'll open up TikTok. And then for, like... I'll scroll for 10 minutes. And it'll be, like, some TikTok news journalist that's like... The drama with the Martinez twins is insane. If you don't know the Martinez twins, they're TikTokers. TikTok is a website where you publish videos, and if they get over a minute, you can get more ad revenue. The Martinez twins touch my ding dong, and then they type the n-word in Six Siege chat. Which is really bad. If you didn't know, the n-word is a bad word. It's just- shut the fuck up, man. I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of it. One minute Andy's all over TikTok. I'm so sick of it. None of it would be drama coverage. It'd be things like Skynut. It'd be things like AIDS voice. It's TikTok accent. They purposely speak like half their brains formed so they can get the video over to one minute. Shooting a potato at a tennis racket to see if you can make- no, It's not their fault. It's, it's literally just like the game that they play. If I was a TikToker and that was my main source of income, I'd be doing the exact same thing. So no hate towards them, but I'm still allowed to say, oh my God, that's insufferable. French fries in midair by frying them in hot oil. It's, it's shit like- Like I was literally 10 minute Andy. I was 10 minute Andy with my daily videos. I'm, I'm just as guilty of it as well. That. And I think I'm going to go back to that kind of stuff as opposed to the direction that I have been going recently. So yeah, this was a lot to go over here, but uh, I hope this has cleared everything up. I remember your odd voice. How's it going, guys? Flashbang here. And uh, yeah, that's really about it. So yeah. Yeah, that's kind of nice. <laughs>